In this video today, I'm going to ask the question which I've asked myself plenty of times and I've heard from other sports science graduates. Why is my career moving so slowly? And firstly, I'll break down the timeline of sports science to get to where you want to be. So firstly, you have to go and do your degree, depending where you go, if it's three or four years. You then go into your postgrad or internships or the process of multiple applications to get what you want. And in some cases, this can take a couple of years. If you're doing a PhD, it could be five, six, seven years. So it's a long slog to get really what you want in life. And then for many jobs, not all, but for many of them, it's still quite low pay, even though you may have done your undergraduate, your postgrad, some additional qualifications, the money for the first couple of years might not be great. So it is a real slow burner. And if you compare that to something like nursing, where the first step is a degree, you'll do placements on top of that as well, and you're qualified as a nurse. I'm not trying to say it's any better or worse um, going into a nursing career or any easier, I'm not saying that at all, but purely timeline, within four years, you can be a qualified nurse and work your way up. And then it's the same in teaching as well. So as a school teacher, your timeline is three or four years. You'll do a relevant degree, you'll then do your PGC on top of that, and then you're a teacher. Okay, it's the early stage, the money's not incredible, but you're on the ladder, you're moving up, you're in your career. So theoretically, going to university at 18, there are certain career pathways where at 22, you're qualified, you're working your way up, but you're within a job and you've kind of reached the career you want to be in. Sports science isn't like that, and it can be very slow and does make you ask the question, well, why is this? Why does it take so long to establish yourself in sports science? And firstly, it's not a specialised degree. Sports science is this broad term for all the modules you do, physiology, psychology, biomechanics. And essentially, you're not really qualified in anything. I mean, you are, you have a sports science degree, but you're not specifically qualified as a strength and conditioning coach, you're not qualified as a sports psychologist, etc., etc. So there's always extra stuff you need to do with accreditations and additional qualifications and postgraduate study to then fit into the job that you're going for. But even then, it's hard. It's not like schools, hospitals, where there's, there could be tens of them in a major city. Within sports science, there are very few jobs in one city. But there are so many graduates that want to do it. On the screen are just a few of the universities which actually do sports science degrees. There's plenty more out there with people that share the same ambition as you. For me, this has really impacted my mental health being in such a competitive industry. Now, there are different elements of my life which contribute to mental health as well, but it's certainly exacerbated by sports science, which is what I'll speak about now. And for me, one of the hardest parts of my life, or my career at least in sports science, was going for a PhD. So in 2015, I was on Google constantly trying to find PhD scholarships in sports science. And it was tough. You can see at the top of this one PhD offer, the one that I actually took, went to Germany, Australia. Brilliant. That was 2016. But all throughout 2015, I'd say at least 30 applications. Bear in mind, it takes a long time to do one application. It's not just a quick form you fill in. For anyone that's listening to this that's done one will tell you, it's a lot of work. So doing that 30 times and being rejected <laughs> 30 times um, is hard, really, really hard. And it's even worse when you see your friends mid-20s, their life's kicking on, they're in a different career route, and they might have a mortgage, they might have a nice car, their life's ahead of yours. And you hang out with those friends that are doing well and they're not saying anything about it, but you feel a certain way. You feel embarrassed. And for me, it would be going out for meals, having very little money, um, and not being able to afford all the social occasions my friends are going out on. It's a first world problem, but it was still pretty frustrating. And the stuff that was going from my head at that time would have been, you know, I'm working hard, I've done my degree, I've done all this after university. Well, why is my life not in their position? Am I good enough? I'm working hard, but hard work's one thing. Do I have the ability to actually pursue the career that I want? You know, if I'm getting rejected this many times, maybe I'm not really that good. And when will my life start? Maybe it sounds a bit melodramatic. You could argue, well, it did. You did a degree, you did some good stuff after you finished a degree, but 
what I truly want, I still didn't have in my mid-twenties. And it's even harder when people around you do have what they want. And when you're getting constant emails from universities saying no, um, with very minimal feedback as well, it's very, very tough to stay motivated. And as I said, that was 30 times getting emails like that. Um, and the few interviews I had, and I wasn't really learning too much because it was just a very short and blunt no. And you just think, well, what's the point? It didn't take 30 applications to feel this way. Maybe the first seven or eight, you just think, Jesus, like, how many times can you get a no before you just give up? And it gets more sincere. You're, you're in bed thinking about it. You can't sleep. And the more you bottle it up and think about it, and you don't share it with someone, you do start to feel pretty down about it. And for me, certainly, um, you think, well, what else am I going to do? Um, it's, it's put me in a corner, this this situation. So suicidal uh, thoughts were definitely um, at the front of my mind for a long time. So my advice for you, and what I'd say is before I go into this, actually, is it's taken this rejection for me to really think about this and be more aware that this is a big problem. For me, it used to be, well, it's just me that's not getting opportunities. And through the years, you see, well, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that feel this way and maybe want to do this video. I'd recommend that you learn the process as early as possible. So whatever it is you want to do in your career, you need to learn about it now. And, you know, this is a very shameless plug of my channel. Um, and there are plenty of videos here, which I believe are very helpful for you. But it's not just this, it's anywhere. It sounds obvious, but even this, just Google, how do I become a teacher, a sports psychologist, whatever it is. Just very simple searches on Google. Just even if you're first year, just understand what you need to do as early as possible. Secondly, network now. It's a running joke with like my first year classes or any year group that I teach really, but just banging on about networking all the time. But you need to do it. I would contact anyone in any city, but let's say it's just your local town where you live or study. Find people in that industry and just contact them any means necessary just find a way to speak to these people and just learn about their rejections their experiences what they did to get into their career also look at job adverts as well um again i don't care if you've been a degree for four minutes and you just started the degree look at adverts you know um so many different websites you can look at to find these a good one the all-in-one is jobs and sports science on twitter look at that Look at the criteria. What do I need to do? What is my checklist now for the next few years if I want to pursue this career? And finally, keep going. I'm not just going to say that on its own because that sounds really um, really poor form when people say, oh, don't worry about it, just keep going. You need to do everything else around you I've spoken about too. But it is hard. Uh, as I've said a couple of times already, 30 applications gone wrong. And it's hard when people ask, oh, how do you get on? You've got to go back to work the next day after that rejection or hang out with your friends. It's very hard to put on a smile and remain positive, especially when you're rejected that many times. And what I would say is these feelings are very normal. I would recommend you go back through the channel and watch a video where I speak about mental health and sports science. These feelings are very, very normal. But if it's not you and it's might be a friend who's applying over and over again for a position check in on them as well speak to them and i've improved a lot of the last couple of years but i certainly would have been the person that wouldn't say anything i wouldn't say i'm struggling or i'm finding this really hard i'll just bottle it up and have a drink instead or find different ways to cope but if you have friends that are struggling you feel they're struggling get in touch not just a very quick simple message ask them again how they're doing Ask them about the applications. Try and get them to open up and speak about how they feel if they're comfortable with that. Okay, so that's my short video on why your career could be moving slowly in sports science. This is very, very normal. And if you want to speak more about my experiences or if you're having a tough time at the minute, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Sports Science Hacks on Instagram and at CJ Thompson 90 on Twitter. Okay, thank you for listening and I'll speak to you again soon.